Can't sit there while this is going on. Yeah, but that's okay, Mom. You didn't get it. Open the door. Get this in your
Well, I don't know about anybody else, but I thought that was about as spectacular as anything I've ever seen. A truly remarkable uh, performance by kids who are 9 and 10 years old. That's, that's um, quite remarkable, Mrs. Savastano. Again, we thank you and all the people who were involved with the play. And, uh, you know, the, the decorations and, and all of the things. There are a number of people we would thank today, and I would do that very quickly. Uh, Mrs. Colcord and her committee were here last night until somewhere around 9, 9.15, uh, setting up for, uh, for today. And all the people who were involved, Mrs. Callahan with the decorations, and uh, Mrs. Janet Mata, who's no longer with us as a teacher and is not, not able to be here today, but... Uh, who made all the costumes, or most of the costumes, for the, uh, the play. Uh, and Lisa for coming up with the idea and, and picking something that was excellent for the kids and fun at the same time. So thank you all. OK. Now, as I look at my program, I guess what's next is I am supposed to say a few words, which is something that I have been fond of doing for many, many years. So, and uh, I try to write something a little bit different this year, culling a little bit from here and there over the years and sort of putting it together into something new. So hopefully this will make some sense and uh, Hopefully there's some uh, useful advice for everyone. In a remarkable motion picture made just a few years ago, the character Forrest Gump said that life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. There is simple wisdom in this statement, but this wisdom does not mean that you should allow your future to be determined by chance. Forrest Gump was a fictional character whose creator knew that we increase our chances to be happy and successful in this life by practicing a variety of virtues, including honesty, caring and compassion for others, effort, devotion to family and friends, courage in the face of adversity, faith in the fundamental goodness of people, and above all, the dogged determination to always do the right thing. Forrest Gump was not a movie made for children, but the character Forrest Gump was certainly childlike. And the success of the movie can be attributed to the fact that it reminded those of us who saw it of the basic ideals of human behavior that bring value and richness to life. The ideals of honesty, caring, compassion, effort, devotion, courage, faith, and determination. I have seen these ideals practiced by many of the students in this fourth grade class. And it makes me proud to be part, just a small part, of their upbringing. It is important, it is crucial, that these ideals remain as a key part of what you children are as human beings. Because the threats to your humanity in the 21st century are very real. In a movie that I know you all saw, The Wizard of Oz, the scarecrow lacks a brain, the tin man a heart, the lion the courage to follow his nature. It is my fear that the domination of our lives by the media replaces our brains. The influence of the computer age replaces our hearts. And our courage to follow our instincts and our convictions is sapped by a culture of cynicism and replaced by feelings of connection to the actions of sports stars and movie characters. In short, there are two messages. First of all, to you students, you need to look to the role models who can keep you from ending up in Oz, where people have no brains, no hearts, and no courage. You will not find these role models on MTV or among the movie stars of this generation. 
You will not find them among the wealthy and selfish superstar athletes. You will not find them very often among the political leaders of our nation and the world who look more to the polls and less to their souls as they make decisions that affect all of us. Instead, look in back of you. Look to your families, your mothers and your fathers, your grandparents, all of whom have learned a great deal about life and who can offer you real examples of what it means to be a decent human being, a good parent, a good citizen. Look to the side of you, to your teachers who give you much and ask for little in return, people who have spent their adult lives devoted to educating children and providing them with examples of what humanity at its best looks like. Secondly, to all of you parents, you can be absolutely certain that if you do not provide exemplary role models for your children, if you do not give them something of value, something of substance to cling on to and to believe in, they will find it out there somewhere else in the media, on the internet, or somewhere in a capitalistic society where there appears to be only a single goal and purpose to life. You as parents and grandparents and teachers must supply the examples and the ideals that these children need. You must provide them with something to hold on to that is stable and unmovable, something firm and fixed, something of value that will not fade away. I suggest to you that what you must supply to these children is as fundamental as the virtues displayed by the simple but sincere character of Forrest Gump. Demonstrate for your children the virtues of honesty, caring and compassion for others, effort, devotion to family and friends, courage in the face of adversity, faith in the fundamental goodness of people, and the dogged determination to always do the right thing. Demonstrate these things and you will give your child something of value to cling to in a world where nothing will be certain but change. Life may indeed be like a box of chocolates, but if you read the label on the box of chocolates before you make a purchase, you'll have a much better chance of acquiring the type of chocolates you want. So in conclusion, I say to you parents, choose wisely, love your children, and give them a place to always go back to, and a set of ideals that will give their lives value. To you students, I say love your parents, Look to your parents and teachers and coaches and families as examples of what being a good person is all about. Live by the ideals of honesty, caring and compassion, full effort, devotion to family and friends, courage, faith and determination, and your life will be meaningful. Good luck and best wishes to all of you. I want to know whose idea it was to make the print smaller on the programs. <laughs> I'm delighted at this time to present Mrs. Maureen Arpin, who will present the Michael J. O'Neill Scholarship Award. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present the Michael J. O'Neill Scholarship. This marks the 15th year of presentation in memory of my brother for students to attend the College Gate Summer Program. Michael was a dedicated teacher at Bennett School who took great pride in his work and at the same time strived to make learning fun. He was very creative and often taught through games and songs. Just last year, a former student with tears in her eyes, presented to my sister and I a banner that read, Mr. O's Heroes. It was a project that she had saved all this time and wanted us to have. Michael placed the utmost importance on having fun. How appropriate we honor him today with a program that does just that. Michael left his mark on many people. 
He had a great sense of humor. Even today, family and friends share funny stories. How happy he must be to know he still makes us laugh. There is a verse I would like to share with you that signifies Mike O'Neill. Priorities. A hundred years from now, it will not matter what my bank account was, the sort of house I lived in, or the kind of car I drove. But the world may be a little different because I was important in the life of a child. At this time, on behalf of my family and friends of, my, of Michael, I am pleased to announce this year's well-deserved recipient, Matthew Phillips. Thank you. Okay, what we're going to do next is we're going to present the, um, the academic awards, uh, starting with the uh, health today for uh, Don Perrin. Please come forward. Thank you. Uh, the fourth grade health awards go to the peer leaders group uh, who have worked very hard together to prepare and present lessons. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Get real close, okay. Sorry. <laughs> the fourth grade health awards go to the peer leaders group who have worked hard together on preparing and presenting lessons, activities, and a puppet show for the first graders on tobacco prevention. Please hold your applause until they are called. Thank you. Brittany Costello, Nicholas Harkin, Daniel Guglielmo, Molly Maloney, Chelsea Perry, Ashley Severs, Andrew Schwartz, Joshua Texera, Chris Oliveira, Kristen Aldridge, and Brittany Bizog. I would announce uh, at this time that we are actually losing two of our staff members who are here today. Uh, Mrs. Perrin has moved on to a, a job closer to her home and um, also uh, our psychologist Mrs. Bonin has also taken a job closer to where she lives and uh, we will miss them. Thank you for your work. Here. Next up, uh, Mrs. Sabastano and the Music Awards. We'll fix this. Thank you. Before I hand out the Music Awards, I'd really like to thank my chorus members for their hard work and dedication. They were wonderful. Your performance was really, really great, and I'm really going to miss you all. I'm very proud of you. Thank you very much, kids. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, now to the music awards, and please hold your applause till the end. Ashley Sievers, Leah Harrington, Carrigan, Rachel Desjardins, Cassandra Kamara, 
Molly Maloney, Brent Borges, Kristen Aldrich, thank you. Oh, you got the wrong one. Give that yes, yours, okay? Organized. Samantha Johnson. Okay. Oops, can you help me? Where are you? I gave you away. Go down there and find yours. Okay, I can take this. This to Samantha on our way, okay? Here you go, buddy. Catherine Ouellette. Here you go. Thank you, Kristen. Yours is down there. Give this to Leah, okay? Matthew Higgins. Thank you, buddy. Okay. Michelle Chapman. Thank you. Bottom one. Nicole Higginbotham. Thank you, Michelle. Catherine Donaldson. Katie Aguiar. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Brittany Costello. Amanda Cochran. Kevin Sullivan. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, Amanda. Nicole Giroux. Thanks, Kevin. Ryan Nolan. Amanda Wilbur. Thank you, buddy. Kyle Royce. Thanks, Ryan. Caitlin Dufresne. Thank you, Amanda. Though. Erica Lake. Thanks, Kyle. You're welcome. Stephen Lima. Kim McPhail. Thank you, buddy. Erica Susello. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Kim. Heather Nolette. Ryan Ansel. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda Bonanca, Ashley Bishop, and Chelsea Perry. Thank you, everybody. Have a great summer. Uh, physical Education Awards uh, be presented by Kristen Bovey, our new phys ed teacher. Awards go to the following students for their cooperation in phys ed. Leah Harrigan, Andrew Manning, Molly McGuire, and Kevin Sullivan. going to do, um, gosh, this is small. <laughs> creative Arts Awards. Um, Lisa Helfen Brown, our guidance counselor, would like to present her Creative Arts Awards.
now you know this is going to be too high for me. I got it. Um, this is for all the children that participated in the We Have Jazz extravaganza. They worked very hard and they did a great job. Alicia Alfonso, Monica Allen, Brittany Bezok, Danielle Bladdock, Cassandra Kamara, Kimber Cherno, Rachel Gunter, Matthew Hebda, Tanya Higginbotham, Matthew Higgins, Molly McGuire, Cindy McIntyre, Alisa Medeiros, Nicole Noons, Kevin Sullivan, and that's it. Uh, Mrs. Tokar Scudero and Mrs. Tulis' uh, class awards will be presented next. I have just one award to give today, and that award is for um, a Certificate of Achievement in Language Arts, and that goes to Kevin Sullivan. Just to clarify what these certificates are, these are academic awards. They're awarded to the student in each classroom who has maintained the highest average for all four terms in each of these subject areas. And in room 10, the award recipients are. The certificate for outstanding achievement in language arts in room 10 goes to Leah Harrigan. The Certificate for Outstanding Achievement in Mathematics goes to Nicole Higginbotham. <laughs> the Award for Outstanding Achievement in Social Studies goes to Katherine Donaldson. The award for outstanding achievement in science in room 10 goes to Matthew Hebda. We also have certificates for perfect attendance, which is an achievement in itself, 180 wonderful days. Uh, two recipients in room 10 for perfect attendance, 
Amanda Bonanca, and Stephen Smith. Thank you. Uh, we have Mrs. Ferrara's uh, room next. Mrs. Ferrara. In room 11 for Outstanding Achievement in Social Studies, Matthew Phillips. Outstanding Achievement in Math in Room 11, Andrew Manning. Okay. Outstanding Achievement in Language Arts, Cassandra Kamara. Outstanding Achievement in Science, Brittany Costello. I also have two awards for perfect attendance, Kristen Aldridge and Cassandra Camara. I also have five awards to present for the Continental Math League. This is something that I've been involved with for quite a few years. Students volunteered to take a um, sort of test of uh, six questions once a month for about five months, and a running total was kept of how many they answered correctly. And these are not your usual mathematic, just computation. There's a lot of thought. If um, any of parents saw these papers, go home. You have an idea of how difficult these questions were. And I'm very happy to say that three out of the five winners are girls. And math is going to be very important from now on, girls and boys. So keep up the good work. Uh, in fifth place, Leah Harrigan. Good job. In fourth place, Molly McGuire. Congratulations. That's a good work. Third place, Nicole Noons. Good job. Second place, Matthew Phillips. Another one. In first place, Joseph Richmond.
Mrs. McKenna will present the awards for room nine. The award for Outstanding Achievement in Language Arts in Room 9 goes to Molly McGuire. <laughs> the award for Outstanding Achievement in Mathematics goes to Nicole Noons. The award for Outstanding Achievement in Science goes to Emily Burrett. And the award for Outstanding Achievement in Social Studies goes to Kimberly McPhail. And I have one award for a uh, certificate of, of perfect attendance, Mark Southam. Moving right along, we have um, a couple of uh, school-wide awards that we present each year. The first is um, is kind of is new and, and a unique award, and it's sort of uh, math problem solving that I do with the kids occasionally out in the class. I'd like to present a special math award to Brent Borges and Brent. Uh, Rob, each year uh, in the Taunton Public Schools, I have the opportunity to be the uh, chairperson, I guess for life, uh, but for the last uh, 15 or so years, I've been chairman of the, uh, so the Spelling Bee Committee, and uh, our fourth grade winner this year and representative was Matthew Phillips. can't get this exactly where I want it. Uh, we have one other major competition that we run in the city each year and that is called the Battle of the Books. Um, for the second consecutive year, same four students from our school uh, took part. Same four were selected for the team based on testing and the same four won the city championship. I would give you our team now, Katherine Donaldson. Leah Harrigan, Molly McGuire, and Nicole Noons. Congratulations one last time. The, um, the young ladies were all involved in, in prep, very hard preparation on the 12 books that they knew. Basically, they had to answer in front of a large audience somewhere in around 46, 45, 46 consecutive questions correctly uh, about the books. It was quite a very a unique achievement. The other awards I have are also very serious awards. We do the awards, academic awards, every year because I would like the third graders to get wind of this so that they understand that we are part of life is competition and there is an opportunity for special recognition at the end of fourth grade if you are the best in your class at something. 
But you don't have to be best to be awarded uh, some sort of a uh, recognition. And the last set of awards that we have this morning are the President's a Educational Awards Program. It's identified as the President's Award for Educational Excellence. Uh, they are stamped by the President of the United States, Bill Clinton, and the Secretary of Education, Richard Riley. And in order to achieve this level, you need to maintain a, a, a 90 plus or a 90 average in all major academic areas. We have 25 recipients today, and I would ask that they all come up and basically going to, the first person can go all the way to this end and back of me, I'll come over there and hand out the uh, certificates to each of you as you leave the stage and we can applaud for all of the students at one time. The following students have been awarded President's Educational Excellence Awards based upon their academic record and recommendation from their teachers. Uh, Kristen Aldridge, Brittany Costello, please come in the order, try not to mess up the order on me because <laughs> and you get the wrong certificate. Andrew Manning, Matthew Phillips, Monica Allen, Danielle Bladdock, Crystal Bloss, Emily Burrett, Rachel Desjardins, Daniel Guglielmo, Kimberly McPhail, Molly McGuire, Ryan Nowland, Nicole Nunes, Joseph Richmond, Mark Southam, Katie Aguiar, Catherine Donaldson, Caitlin Dufresne, Eric Grant, Leah Harrigan, Matthew Hebda, Nicole Higginbotham, Molly Maloney, Joshua Texera, Kevin Sullivan. Congratulations. The other uh, announcement we would like to make is that uh, we do have a presentation for the uh, Morton Hospital. Uh, however, Mr. Porter was unable to attend at this time and uh, we'll, we will make that presentation at the hospital. That is also listed on your program. At this time, I would ask that the students from Mrs. McKenna's class come forward to receive their diplomas.
press will be happier. Monica Allen. <laughs> Brittany Bezok. Danielle Bladdock. Crystal Bloss. Emily Burrett. Christopher Castro, Brian Collins, Corey Kokenauer, Nicholas Coughlin, Rachel Desjardins, Nicole Giroux, Daniel Guglielmo, Rachel Gunter, Matthew Higgins, Brian Justinski, Kimberly McPhail, Molly McGuire, Cindy McIntyre, Ryan Nowland, Nicole Noons, Kellen O'Connell, Brandon Piva, Brandon Perry, Michael Pettit, Nicholas Pru. Michael Regu, Joseph Richman, Mark Southam, Andrew Swartz, Allison Tweedell. If Mrs. Toulis and Mrs. Tokar Scudero's classes would come forward now.
Okay, well, I guess that's... Alicia Alfonso. Congratulations, honey. Katie Aguiar. Matthew Albagaria. Ryan Ansel. Ashley Bishop. Amanda Bonanca. Brent Borges. Congratulations, Brent. Michelle Chapman. Kimbra Cherno. Amanda Cochran. Patrick Coughlin. Andrew DeCastro. Catherine Donaldson. Caitlin Dufresne. Richard Dunn. William Fairclough. Joel Figueroa. Alessandro Gasparo. Sean Georgiakopoulos. Eric Grant. Leah Harrigan. Brandon Hathaway. Matthew Hebda. Nicole Higginbotham. Erica Lake. Okay, to a point. <laughs> Stephen Lima. Molly Maloney. Elisa Medeiros. Heather Nolette. Christopher Oliveira. Caitlin Willette. Catherine Willette, sorry. Catherine Willette. I wanted to say Katie. Chelsea Perry. <laughs> Robert Scabilio. <coughs> Stephen Smith. Kevin Sullivan. Joshua Texera. Amanda Wilbur. Ian Williams.
Mrs. Ferrara's class, please come forward to receive their diplomas. In room 11, Kristen Aldridge. Nicholas Audley. Heather Barth. Nicholas Bradshaw. Sarah Caldera. Cassandra Camara. Brittany Costello. Jonathan Dresser. Shannon Flores. Samantha Gautieri. Nicholas Harkins. Tanya Higginbotham. Samantha Johnson. Nicholas Labrie. Justin Lima. Andrew Manning. Kayla McCormick. Derek Matoza. Ashley Mata. Matthew Phillips. Kevin Rogers. Kyle Royce. Miles Rudy. Ashley Severs. Christopher Silva. Erica Cercello. Jared Talbot. Ashley Tebow. And Christopher Throm. And one last time, that, that, uh, those are the graduates of the class of 1999. Congratulations to all of you.
Since the music starts, we'll move to the beginning of the okay? Since the music starts. Mike, is this working? Will be refreshments next door. Thank you.